Hey guys, I want to talk about something that I struggled with for a long time and um, when I finally came to terms with it, it really changed my outlook on, on the, the whole strength and conditioning and fitness industry and, and my, um, my role in it. So when I was younger, um, like, like most people, I focused really hard on the technical aspects of this business. So I focused on being the best trainer that I could be. Uh, you know, I, I focused on on being a great coach, being a technical trainer that knew how to correct mistakes, coach, uh, give feedback, um, you know, adjust to different situations, and and basically everything that went into being a good coach and a good trainer. Um, I think that was the right way to go. By the way, um, as a young um, as a young coach or trainer, I think the best thing to do is to focus on being great at training. Um, that's when I was a college coach. Um, when when we opened up Total Performance, uh, this is now back in 2002, I was still in that mode for a couple of years. And I thought that, hey, I'm a coach. I'm, I'm a doer. I am here to, to, to coach and to train you. Um, but I realized that that the people I was talking to weren't always looking at me that way. They were oftentimes looking at me as someone who was trying to sell them something. Well, I didn't like that. And I was one of those people who said, well, I, you know, I'm not a salesperson. I, uh, I'm not here to sell. That's not what I do. I don't want to deal with that. Um, but that's, that was the role that I had. I mean, that's what people were viewing me as, at least partly. Um, they knew that I was a coach, but I was also selling stuff. So, um, so I had to kind of start to come to terms with that. Well, I recently, uh, I recently read a short article by a marketing expert named Dan Kennedy. You may have heard of him. He's, he's a pretty famous guy. He's written a bunch of books. And he was talking about uh, the difference between doers and between people who are marketers and sellers and how the marketers and sellers are are very much harder to find than doers and I started putting it together in, in in the fitness industry and it totally hit me there are about a hundred trainers for every person out there who is able to market and sell training services and I realized that the the personal trainers at least that I know um, and, and I'll go with strength coaches who are able to market and sell themselves and s their services have, in my experience, made a lot more money than the people who are just there to take appointments. And I have a couple of trainers who have worked for me um, in particular who have made a lot of money. They were, they were good trainers. I'm not saying they were bad trainers. They were good trainers, but they were much better marketers and sellers than other trainers have been. And um, so Dan, Dan was talking about how, yeah, you need to be good at doing and good at, uh, at your technical skills. So in, in our case, training and coaching. But if you really want to take that, that leap up next step in your career, you're going to have to start to look at yourself as someone who can market the services that you provide. Now, I'm not saying you stop providing great services and you stop trying to be a great trainer or a great coach, um, but at some point, you're going to have to get over the fact that you are a salesperson or you should be in some way. There are not too many trainers out there who are just great trainers and don't sell anything and don't like any part of the marketing um, side of the business and still make a lot of money. Yeah, it does happen. But even the trainers who um, don't view themselves as good salespeople, they've got some skills and they understand that that's part of the business. So I'm going to provide a couple of resources for you below, uh, below this video. Um, some things that are more specific to the fitness industry than just general marketing and sales. But um, I'm going to encourage you to, to get out and start to think of marketing and sales as basically a way to get people to understand what you do and to get people to do it. So rather than sitting there waiting for, for clients and customers to come to you, you're going to go 
and start thinking about how to get them in the door so that you can then deliver the best the best product the best quality service that uh, that is available obviously if you don't have a quality service you don't have anything good to sell but um, but we all know salespeople who are selling a somewhat inferior product and end up doing just fine so um, I think if you're looking to to make more money in the business and to become more of the uh, I think Dan called it the queen bee rather than the worker bee um, then start start looking at some of these marketing concepts and and looking at your business and your career through that lens instead of only looking at the technical aspects um, I, I still today really get into the technical stuff I love the research I love the science I love talking about stuff but um, but I realized that that the missing component has always been the ability to market and sell and uh, I'm going to encourage you to do that. Check out some of these links and and maybe start to uh, start to look through that. So I hope this tip and th this tip kind of helps and gets you thinking about another side of the business. And uh, I look forward to seeing you again soon.